according to Her Majesty's Court Services of Great Britain, the part played by magistrates and justices in the judicial system of England and Wales can be traced to the late 12th century. Richard the Lionheart, Richard I of England, commissioned certain knights to preserve the peace in unruly areas. They were responsible to the king for ensuring that the law was upheld, and were known as keepers of the peace, a phrase that imported a police or militia function. The modern justice of the peace belongs to a centuries-old system of voluntary legal officers. The description of a person as a justice comes from the fact that in earlier times, people who provided justice for the population in general came to have the term attached to their own name and role. The term justice, justitia, had originally been used to describe the travelling judges who moved from place to place throughout England, trying persons who had been accused of serious offences. In the reign of Henry III, there were citizens with the title of custodes paces, that is, keepers of the peace, who had administrative and semi-military functions in maintaining the peace throughout the land. In those ancient times, the king was all-powerful, and law enforcers were concerned that the population kept the king's peace. If one offended against the peace, then one was offending against the king, and could be severely punished for so doing. In the main, the function of the early peace officers was a police or enforcement role, but as time went by, their civil duties increased at the expense of the paramilitary or police duties. There were travelling judges to deal with offenders, but in 1327 King Edward III, by way of legislation, introduced the peace officer to deal with minor offences and thus allow the judges the time to deal with the more serious offences. The Act of 1327 referred to good and lawful men to be appointed in every county in the land to guard the peace, such individuals were first referred to as conservators of the peace, or wardens of the peace. By the mid-14th century, Henry III's old title of custodes paces had come to be called justices of the peace instead, thus combining the two notions of justice and peace officer. Edward III passed a law requiring them to meet at least four times a year, to make sure that the more important offences were actually brought to trial. Out of this requirement of meeting four times a year came the term quarter sessions, Edward also passed an act which provided, amongst other things, that in every county of England shall be assigned for the keeping of the peace, one lord and with him three or four of the most worthy of the county, with some learned in the law, and they shall have the power to restrain the offenders, rioters, and all other berators, and to pursue, arrest, take and chastise them according to their trespass or offence. The peace to be guarded is the king's peace, the maintenance of which is the duty of the crown under the royal prerogative. Justices of the peace still use the power conferred or reconferred on them in the 14th century to bind over unruly persons to be of good behaviour. The bind over is not a punishment, but a preventive measure, intended to ensure that people thought likely to offend will not do so. The Tudor monarchs in the 16th century established the first real system of English local government, and to do this, they made use of the already established system of justices of the peace. They placed most of the responsibility for administering the English parishes upon the local justices who were made responsible for the upkeep of highways, the imposition of local rates, the licensing of alehouses, and the administration of the poor law. In the early 18th century, the qualifications of persons for the role of J.P. were considerably altered. Attorneys, solicitors, and anyone not possessing an estate worth £100 per year were disqualified from holding office as a justice. The functions of the English Justice of the Peace in the early half of the 18th century. A single justice could fine a drunkard on the spot, give a gambler a month's hard labour, and order a parish to relieve a pauper. At petty sessions within each division were appointed the surveyors of highways and that most arbitrary sovereign on earth. The overseer of the poor and the rate for maintaining the highways was fixed. Divisional sessions granted alehouse licences. At quarter sessions, the justices administered the laws for the upkeep of bridges, jails and houses of correction, and fixed county rates for these purposes. They heard petitions of disabled soldiers for pensions, issued writs to the sheriff for the distraint of accused persons, and proclaimed new regulations. They fixed wages and prices. Most important of all, they tried indictments for individual offences. The justices' alternative title of magistrate dates from the 16th century. Although the word had been in use centuries earlier to describe some legal officials of Roman times, being an unpaid office, undertaken more for the sake of renown, and to confirm the justice's standing within the community, the justice was typically a member of the gentry.
The justices of the peace conducted arraignments in all criminal cases and tried misdemeanors and infractions of local ordinances and bylaws, towns and boroughs with enough burdensome judicial business that could not find volunteers for the unpaid role of justice of the peace had to petition the Crown for authority to hire a paid stipendiary magistrate. Over the centuries, justices acquired many administrative duties, such as the administration of the poor laws, highways and bridges, and weights and measures. For example, before 1714, justices could be approached at any time, and in any place by people legally recognised as paupers, appealing to them for aid if parish authorities had refused to provide any. It was relatively common for these justices to write out on the spot an order requiring aid to be granted. The 19th century saw elected local authorities taking over many of these duties. Towards the end of the 18th century, the absence of an adequate police force and the quality of local justices became matters of concern. Justices received no salary from the government, although they could charge fees for their services. They were appointed from prominent citizens of property, but a shortage of landed gentlemen willing to act in London led to problems. In Middlesex, for example, the commission was increasingly dominated by merchants, tradesmen and a small number of corrupt magistrates, known as trading justices because they exploited their office for financial purposes. A police bill in 1785 failed to bring adequate supervision of justices. However, the Middlesex Justices Act of 1792 set up seven public offices in addition to Bow Street, London with three justices in each, with salaries of £400 a year. The power to take fees was removed from all justices in the city. Six constables were appointed to each office, with powers of arrest. This was the origin of the modern stipendiary magistrate. One famous magistrate was Sir John Fielding, known as the Blind Beak of Bow Street, who succeeded his half-brother as magistrate in Bow Street Magistrates Court in 1754, and refined his small band of officers, formerly known as the Bow Street Runners, into an effective police force for the capital. Stipendiaries remained in charge of the police until 1839. The first paid magistrate outside London was appointed in 1813 in Manchester. The 1835 Municipal Corporations Act gave boroughs the ability to request the appointment of a stipendiary magistrate in their locality. Originally, stipendiaries were not required to have any qualifications, however they could only be appointed from the ranks of barristers from 1839 and solicitors from 1849. Women in England and Wales were not allowed to become justices until 1919, the first woman being Ada Summers, the mayor of Staleybridge, who was a JP by virtue of her office. Today, the number of male and female magistrates is approximately equal. In the centuries from the Tudor period until the onset of the Industrial Revolution, the JPs constituted a major element of the English, later British government system, which had been termed sometimes squirearchy, that is, dominance of the land owning gentry. For example, historian Tim Blanning notes that while in Britain the royal prerogative was decisively curbed by the Bill of Rights 1689, in practice the central government in London had a greater ability to get its policies implemented in the rural outlying regions than could contemporary absolute monarchies such as France. A paradox due especially to JPs belonging to the same social class as the members of parliament and thus having a direct interest in getting laws actually enforced and implemented on the ground. Until the introduction of elected county councils through the Municipal Corporations Act 1835, JPs administered the county at a local level. They fixed wages, regulated food supplies, built and controlled roads and bridges, and undertook to provide and supervise locally those services mandated by the Crown and Parliament for the welfare of the county. The Municipal Corporations Act 1835 stripped the power to appoint normal JPs from those municipal corporations that had it. This was replaced by the present system, where the Lord Chancellor, or as in the case in Australia, the State Attorney General, nominates candidates with local advice for appointment by the Crown. The role evolved gradually and spread to the colonies, as the British Empire expanded. The first appointed Justice of the Peace in Australia occurred at the very beginning of the colony of New South Wales. Governor Philip in 1788 was appointed to the Justices of the Peace position and was empowered to appoint other judges and justices by commission. The first female JPs in Australia were appointed in South Australia in 1915. A Justice of the Peace in Australia is typically someone of good stature in the community who is authorised to witness and signed statutory declarations and affidavits 
and to certify copies of original documents, criteria for appointment vary widely, depending on the state. For example, in Queensland, all JPs must complete an exam prior to being eligible for appointment, whereas in Victoria, a person need only prove good character by way of references. Queensland achieved statehood in 1859. To that point in time, it was policed as part of New South Wales. There were 31 justices of the peace appointed in the colony between 1857 and 1859. Today there are 70,000 JPs in Queensland. The first official Queensland JP was Mr. William Hunter, who was appointed on 24 January 1859. There are a number of references to the role of the JP, for example in the Justices Act and Queensland's Criminal Code, both of which passed into law in the 19th century. The first female JP in Queensland was Matilda Hennessy sworn into office in 1918. As the years passed, so did the responsibilities of the JP. In recent years, with the onset of more complex and intricate legislation, the Justice of the Peace role has been taken over partly by the appointment of professionally qualified magistrates. This has not diminished the importance of the Justice of the Peace in today's society. In fact, recent legislation is imposing more responsibility upon the Justice of the Peace to ensure that the objectives of legislation are carried out properly. Enduring powers of attorney are one example of this responsibility. Generally speaking, a Justice of the Peace cannot act in relation to a document which is to be used in a foreign country. One exception to this, however, is that countries in the Commonwealth frequently accept documents so certified, but this is largely dependent on local legislation. Documents which are to be used in a foreign country that does not provide for a foreign JP to witness them should be dealt with by a notary public. This is the same for all countries where the Office of Justice of the Peace exists. Notaries public are often solicitors or barristers, and the best way to locate one is to contact your local law society. In 21st century Australia, justices of the peace are appointed from all walks of life, but have always been highly respected members of the community. Australia has in many ways mirrored the English experiences, whereby the judicial functions have been overtaken by the appointment of magistrates, who have more formal legal training and extensive experience of the legal system. The legal system more than ever is reliant upon the administrative role that justices of the peace now perform, whilst the judicial roles undertaken help to keep a check on powers of various law enforcement officers such as the police or customs. For example, it is the responsibility of the justice of the peace to exercise judicial discretion when determining whether to issue a summons or warrant. In Queensland each year, JPs handle around 3,500 such matters a day, alleviating the need for more formal legal intervention. Importantly, the community in Queensland has a free, voluntary and accessible service provided by the JPs in the community programme. Public signing desks can be found in shopping centres, libraries, courthouses and hospitals. Many other JPs in Queensland provide their communities with services through their workplace or in community and educational organisations.